Imagine that you're on stage at a major competition. There are hundreds of eyes on you and your team as you each try to keep your cool, but you're in it together. And you know that you'll have each other's backs, you'll pick up on each other's mistakes, and you'll work as a team despite any sort of setback. And knowing that seems to take off some of the pressure. But now imagine that exact same situation on the exact same stage, but now your teammates are gone. There's no emotional support, no spreading that workload, and no having teammates to cover up your mistakes. Now all the pressure is on you. Every minor slip up is gonna be punished. Every moment of frustration is gonna be exploited. And if you lose, there's nowhere to place that blame. There's no teammates, there's no RNG, there's just a strong realization that you're not good enough. A realization that's gonna be shared with everyone watching. So now the question comes back to you, are you going to dominate this game and earn the respect and admiration from the spectators, or are you going to miserably fail and lose this critical opportunity to advance your gaming career? Well, with this level of pressure, how the hell is anyone supposed to keep calm and avoid getting overwhelmed with anxiety? The simple answer is confidence. Because with the right level of confidence, you'll feel relaxed and energized, you'll be able to play at the peak of your potential, even under immense pressure. And without confidence, you'll feel uncomfortable and anxious, you'll avoid risks and fail to seize any sort of opportunity. And this factor of confidence is obvious when you look to pro esports players who seem calm and collected on stage despite the amount of pressure that's on them to succeed. So what is their secret? Well, I recently got a chance to ask this question to two extremely skilled esports players who play under this kind of pressure all the time, and they shared some of their greatest tips to help you get mentally prepared for ranked games and tournaments so that you can summon your inner confidence, fight off anxiety, and play at your best. So how important is confidence? Well, if you've ever felt anxiety before a ranked game or tournament, then you know exactly how uncomfortable it is. As you become more and more uptight, it just becomes harder and harder to focus. Suddenly you're stuck in your head thinking about how likely you are to mess up. And then of course, as the game goes on, any sort of small setback just seems to kind of confirm your harshest self-doubt. And the science seems to illustrate this as well. In one study, researchers conducted four different experiments to analyze the role that stereotype threats and confidence play when it comes to mental performance, specifically on mental rotation tests. In one of the figures, you can see how the difference from lowest levels to highest levels of confidence are correlated with an almost two times improvement in performance accuracy. And seeing stats like this makes it obvious how pro players who seem to be able to keep a level head and play with confidence under intense pressures will usually rise to the top. But how exactly do they summon that level of confidence before, say, a major tournament? Well, recently I got the opportunity to attend the Get On My Level Smash tournament in Toronto, where I got to meet up with Axe who plays for Tempo Storm and DeBuzz who plays for Team Liquid. Now both players are highly skilled and have their fair share of victories on the big stage. Recently, Axe won his first major tournament at Smash Summit, and if you can find the highlights online, definitely check them out, it was pretty amazing to see. And a few months back, DeBuzz took home $20,000 for his victory at Thunder Smash. But whether you play fighting games or not, it's hard to deny that playing on stage at major tournaments, especially by yourself, requires some insane mental strength. And most of us still get a bit of anxiety from just playing ranked games in the comfort of our own homes. But both of these players shed some light on key tactics that they use in order to prepare for tournaments and summon that inner confidence needed during each match. Now the term confidence can be described as a belief in one's ability to succeed. I'll break that down for a second. In order to believe in your ability to succeed, you first need to understand what it takes to succeed, and then understand where your abilities are in reference to that. In other words, you need to know how good you are compared to the competition, and you need to get yourself to a point where it's obvious you're good enough to do well. To highlight this a bit further, think back to when you say took a test or did a presentation and you weren't prepared at all. You most likely had feelings of just pure dread and anxiety leading up to it. But now think to when you took a test or did a presentation and you felt extremely prepared. Now this likely made you feel a lot more relaxed and a lot more confident. And this all leads to the first tip. To be confident, you need to be prepared. You need to know, in general, 
the matchups, like most of the high tier matchups to mid tier matchups at least, because those are the ones you're gonna be running into in tournaments. I don't think you need to like super hardcore on just one matchup though. A common mistake that I think people make is looking at their tournament bracket, they see one person and they're just like, okay, I'm gonna practice really hard for this one person, you know? In my opinion, it's about just your overall gameplay. Can you feel good? Are you moving well? You just gotta feel good the whole day and don't focus too much on the one person. While Axe addressed this from a Smash perspective, the core of his advice is true for any game. If the match is starting and you feel your opponent has skills and strategies that you aren't sure how to counter, then you've already lost the match before it's even started. So you need to know your enemy, the characters that they're likely to use, how to deal with certain abilities, how to counter common playstyles. And since most people stick to the current meta, study the things that are currently top tier and commonly used. But think of preparing for a tournament or a ranked game kind of like preparing for a test. It doesn't make sense to focus only on one or two topics, because sure you'll end up acing that part of the test, but you'll lose points on every other area, and as a result, you'll fail overall. So cast your nets over a wide range of skills and matchups that you feel you need to work on. And honestly, this might feel a little counterintuitive for most players, because by nature we often want to master a few specific skills and kind of rely on them like a crutch. Hence why a lot of FPS players will tunnel vision on aim training without practicing position or map strategies nearly enough. So make a preparation plan, a sort of written list with specific things that you need to practice. This will include things like practicing a little against each of the top tier matchups, creating general strategies for each map, addressing mechanical weaknesses, and studying the meta. And the goal is to basically prepare for any sort of situation that your opponent can throw at you. So be sure to write it all down and stick to that plan as you get closer to the event. Alright, so your first tip is to make a preparation plan, and then of course put it into action. But of course, the putting it into action parts takes a lot of time. I think for me, before an event like this, I was probably practicing, like looking at videos, studying matchups, and just playing five hours a day? Okay. So that's a good chunk of time, but it's doable, you know? Ideally, if I can, like, I can get like 12 hours a day before some events. Like if I'm traveling, like I have like a full day. Actually, yesterday's a good example. Yesterday I had basically a full day to just play, yeah. and I got probably like seven hours of practice in. Okay. You know, and before like an event like EVO, I'd probably like shut off like everything, like stream social media and only just practice, because that's so big. Now the most important aspect of this is how you manage your time. Not unlike properly studying for a test, these players will start this sort of intense preparation way in advance. And then of course they'll practice at least a little bit every single day. Now those at an amateur level will often treat it like amateur students who sort of cram their learning into short periods of time, maybe on the weekends, and then only start preparing a couple days before a tournament. And this can be a huge issue because cramming really doesn't work. Cramming all your practice into one like you would sort of like a final on a test, it just doesn't work really. Uh, you have to be like, you gotta be like feeling good, playing good, and already know all your stuff coming into the tournament. So last minute practice usually doesn't affect all that much when it comes to that. Now this comparison to cramming before a test is pretty relatable for most of us. And intuitively, we all know that it doesn't work as well as we'd like it to. In fact, when we try to cram information or train specific skills for hours on end, we're just likely to make our brains tired without providing enough time for the information to sink in. You can almost think of it like building a house where you lay down some brick, put some mortar on top, then another brick, and if you keep going without letting that mortar dry, then things aren't gonna work out so well. So what then is the ideal solution for this? My advice is to just play every day, even if it's like five minutes. Okay. Like just do, just do a little something every day so you get the feel of like, okay, you know, this is like normal to me now. And when you go to a tournament, it's like normal for you to be playing. Yeah. So even just turning on the game, playing for like five minutes and that's it. Like that's, that'll still make you really good by uh, just, being in it every single day. And this advice is actually quite interesting, because while the idea of playing for even a few minutes each day seems a little extreme, there is some power to it. You see, our brains make better connections and overall remember things more effectively when we space out our learning over time. The reason for this is because of something called the forgetting curve. When you develop a chunk of game knowledge or practice a specific skill, your brain will begin to kind of prune away most of that new learning over the course of a few days. 
but when you recall that information or practice that skill again a day or two later, you interrupt that forgetting curve, signaling to your brain that that information is worth keeping. And the more times you interrupt this forgetting curve, the more the information is going to stick. So spacing out your practice at least a little bit every day is actually very powerful. And on days where you can't get much practice in, at least do a little bit of training to tell your brain that that skill is worth keeping. Now, of course, for most days where you have more free time, you'll want to spend more than just a few minutes practicing. But how much is enough? Well, the Buzz shared his perspective on this and provided some realistic advice for serious competitors. Ideally, you want to get, for me, it's ideally you want like four hours of some sort of practice a day, whether it's watching videos, playing. Yeah. I know it's also unreasonable for most people, so I try to tell them, get like 10 to 14 hours minimum a week if you really, really care. I think that's, even for someone working and doing like school, you should get at least like 10 hours a week. And this seems like a good rule of thumb. Get at least 13 to 14 hours of practice over the course of the week. Now, most players do this already, but they tend to cram, say, six to seven hours of practice in on Saturday and Sunday, and then barely play during the week. A much better alternative is to spread it out more evenly, allowing, say, two to four hours of practice each day, and then on extremely busy days, at least try to get in a small amount of focused practice. Even if it's just 15 to 20 minutes of specific drills, it's going to be enough to maintain your improvement and turn those skills into muscle memory. So let's say it is now only a few days before a tournament, or it's only hours before an important match. What should you be practicing now in order to ensure that you're confident and prepared during the game? For like the week or two leading up to an event, I do like to just play a lot. It's not necessarily studying specific matchups, it's just about feeling good and, and getting in this right zone where like you just you just feel good you know and doing that leading up to an event uh, is just really nice my confidence just comes from practice just knowing that i'm able to do things in friendlies you know like if you're playing friendlies throughout the week leading up to an event you're like this is fun you know i like to just go in and just play games i'm feeling good the next day yeah i'm feeling good the next day you're still feeling good you go to a tournament guess what you're feeling good and that means you're going to do well in bracket so as Axe explains, leading up to a tournament, he stops focusing on specific matchups and just tries to kind of get into a place where he feels good. Now, the first time you see that clip, it might not seem like much of a tip at all, because what exactly does he mean by feeling good? And why does he just play a lot of friendly and casual games before a tournament rather than getting in more purposeful and intense practice sessions? Well, let's step back for a moment and try to understand the psychology behind why this works. Now this philosophy of studying less and just playing more casually while leading up to a tournament actually relates in many ways to how athletes approach upcoming competitions. When it comes to training for athletic performance, athletes need to work out intensely every day. They're constantly pushing their bodies to a point of exhaustion which forces it to adapt. And between each workout, there's a sort of refractory period in which they need to rest and let their muscles recover. But due to the intensity of their training, their muscles rarely get a chance to completely recover. That being said, before an upcoming event, they'll need to kind of taper down their workouts so that their muscles actually do fully recover so that they can be ready to perform at their absolute best when the event comes. Now, when it comes to mental training, we don't necessarily need to let our brains rebuild itself like a muscle, but we do need to give our brain a certain amount of time to turn conscious learning into muscle memory. When you learn something new, you need to think about it a lot. But over the course of a few weeks, that mental training will slowly be transitioned into an unconscious process. So if you're to train hard right before a tournament and learn a ton of new information, once you're in the game, you're likely going to get stuck in your head thinking about all those new lessons. And Axe seems to avoid this with a sort of mental taper, by switching gears from active learning to just playing a lot of friendly matches and bringing all of his previous training together into a non-pressured environment. This allows him to rely less on conscious thinking leading up to the tournament. And then once he's at the event, he's able to just kind of rely on muscle memory without getting stuck in his own head. Now, if you're applying this before a tournament, this means that you're going to practice hard and intensely for, say, the weeks leading up to a tournament. But then within, say, five to six days before it, you can start to slowly taper down. But of course, you can also apply it to ranked games as well. Instead of trying to actively summon up all your game knowledge and skill right before the match, just 
completely let go. Play some fun warm-up games against friends or bots and allow yourself to just kind of chill out and get into the flow of just playing and feeling good doing it. When it comes to maintaining your mental fortitude during a match, your level of preparation is huge. But of course, preparation is only half the battle, because once you're actually in the game or at a tournament, you'll need a second set of tactics to help you adopt the right mindset to keep your cool. But these are tips that we'll be exploring in the next video, because for now, I want you to just focus on preparation. So begin by creating a game plan for at least three weeks leading up to a tournament. Spend the first few weeks practicing at least a few hours each day, and ideally spend the last week or so focused on just kind of playing the game, combining all those things that you worked on and getting it all to a point where it kind of flows together. Now, if you haven't played in tournaments yet, then I recommend taking these lessons with you and applying them to your first tournament, whether that's local or online. As you develop and execute this preparation plan, you'll notice that the nervous anticipation of that upcoming tournament is slowly gonna diminish as you become more and more confident. But for ranked games, of course, you'll want to condense these tips. Perhaps every week or so, create a new game plan to develop a general level of game knowledge with a major focus on patching up your areas of weakness or adapting to a new meta. And of course, be sure to practice at least a little bit each day, ideally a few hours, but on busy days, at least 15 to 20 minutes of specific focus drills. And leading up to the ranked game, spend at least an hour or so tapering off from any key learning. Spend time just kind of warming up, having fun, being relaxed, and getting to a place where you feel good and confident. When you're sitting in front of the screen, and the time has come to face the competition, things can spiral out of control real fast. You notice that the enemy is using a certain character or strategy or playstyle you're just not prepared to face. You quickly begin to feel like things are more and more hopeless. Perhaps you had a game plan in your mind, you had it all mapped out, but this was unexpected. You try to focus, to relax, to get out of your head and into the zone, but the more you try, the harder it seems. You're vulnerable, stuck in a downward spiral, and even though the match has just started, you've already lost it. But with a few simple adjustments leading up to that game, everything can change. You can enter the same match as though you're prepared for anything, flexible in your game plan. And now as the match begins, you feel relaxed and everything just seems to flow. You're feeling good, and that gives you a level of resilience that the enemy just doesn't have. Now they're the ones stuck in their own head, trying to make sense of your playstyle, trying to think their way through the match. Your confidence is shaking them, and it's giving you an upper hand. And even though the match has just started, you've already won. Hey guys, I hope you loved this video, and if you did, then don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. And if you weren't aware yet, we have a fairly new Discord server for all of the Eathy Labs superfans, so if you want to join the community, then check that out using the link in the description. And of course, this video is brought to you by our very own esports supplements, E-Advantage. Now, eAdvantage is designed to help you get better in-game results and help you to improve your skills faster, and it does this by giving you a focus and energy boost, one beyond any sort of typical energy drink, and of course it does so in a much healthier way. It essentially combines beneficial ingredients that you might find in an energy drink, but adds even better brain-boosting ingredients to it, and then packs it all into a small capsule. As a result, you get a huge focus boost and even a memory boost in a much healthier and even cheaper way. And there are tons of Eathy Labs fans that have been using eAdvantage and we've been getting amazing feedback from it. One fan even sent in an email mentioning that he was able to climb three ranks in two weeks, nearly double his accuracy, and start getting 29.63% more kills due to eAdvantage. So if you want to give it a try and see how much it helps you improve, then use the code EATHLETE13 to get 13.5% off your entire order. The link for eAdvantage as well as this code will be in the description down below. But if supplements are not your thing and you still want to help support the channel, then grab yourself some eAthlete merch. You can now get a custom eSports jersey, a mouse pad, or even a hoodie so you can start repping eAthlete. 
and every single merch sale really does help us out. It helps us allocate more time and resources to every single video. So not only will you look great with the merch, but it really does help us out. And the link for the merch store as well as a discount code will also be in the description down below. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.